Right? Everyone here is okay with the idea that light is a particle? Yeah? Is it the particle that's causing the wave, or do they both get emitted? Well, think about electromagnetic wave. <laughs> um, so let's see. If you have, you know, electromagnetic wave like this, I think I see what you're saying. So when we talk about sound waves, um, sound waves are actually made up of particles. It's made up of air molecules. But the air molecules themselves are not the sound wave. Air molecules simply make up the medium that the sound waves travel in. Now, what is the medium for this light wave? What did it say the medium for the light wave was? Well, we went over for two weeks how it doesn't exist. So what is the medium for the light wave? Electromagnetic spectrum. I mean, so what we call light wave is an oscillation of electric field and magnetic field. So, um, or it's a propagating oscillation of electric field and magnetic field. I can get electric field to oscillate by just taking a charged particle and shaking it. Right? So this is the question. Um, does, for this uh, shaking of the electric field to propagate through space, does it need to depend on some kind of uh, material medium? No, right? It can travel through a vacuum. So light has no medium. Unlike sound, sound does need this air to travel through. If you vacuum out the, all the air in the room, you wouldn't hear me. Well, said from time soon. <laughs> um, so, so you are asking, okay, so then is it a particle that's making up the wave? Well, um, there's uh, no, nothing material underneath the electromagnetic wave to consider as a particle. So, so that's the, um, so uh, does, does that answer at least some part of your question? Uh, I can tell you one thing. Photon has no charge. Yeah. So if you have a charged particle, um, uh, you know, something that's negatively charged, as I shake it, it's going to generate electromagnetic wave. But the electromagnetic wave itself, uh, it doesn't have any charge. And you kind of know that because the one light wave doesn't actually interact with another light wave. If I, you know, if I cross these two in the middle, like they don't interact with each other. And um, in fact, this is why we get the whole superposition principle and all this stuff, because one oscillation of electric field doesn't interact with another oscillation of electric field. So I can tell you not right now that this electromagnetic wave, it's not associated with anything that has an electric charge. So with the quantum mechanics, I will say this much. If, uh, as, I, as you hear the words I speak, if you thought, oh, that makes sense, um, then I will just warn you that you may not have thought it through too much, which is OK maybe for this class, because it's lower division <laughs> physics. Um, but uh, Feynman said these famous words. Uh, Richard Feynman, he did a quantum electrodynamics, whatever, uh, that if you think you understood the quantum mechanics, then you, um, you haven't understood it or something like that. Uh, at some point, maybe not today, but as you are going through quantum mechanics, some aspect of it should cause you to puzzle. And I will tell you, with the special relativity, I said there is no such thing as paradox in special relativity, because you know, it's just misunderstanding. With the quantum mechanics, um, um, there are paradoxes. There are unresolved, uh, unresolved questions, not of uh, things that you can resolve by experiment, but more of what we call interpretation of quantum mechanics. So let me just leave you with this. Um, nine formalisms of quantum mechanics. I think that's the name of a paper. Um, no, nine formulations of quantum mechanics. So um, I think I did say at some point, quantum mechanics has a traumatic childhood, right? Um, and this is one aspect of it. There aren't nine formulations of special relativity. But with the quantum mechanics, there are many different ways of expressing it because um, it's just, um, it, 
there are aspects of it that just deeply disagree with our classical intuition, and there's no easy way to simply explain it. You know, here, use this Lorentz transformation, and everything will be fine. There's nothing like that for quantum mechanics. So what I want to do starting today is to introduce you to some of the quantum mechanical assumptions, quantum mechanical um, things that, you know, I introduced this by saying this was an ad hoc assumption. And um, it's things are going to get less ad hoc. We are going to have more fundamental assumptions, things that's universally applicable. But um, it'll still be an assumption. It'll, it's not something you can derive from classical mechanics. It's something new that you have to be told. 